Hello, today we're going to look at this. This was in uh, the first relay series video. It was a display cabinet of relays. Uh, and I mentioned about uh, displaying it in the second one actually. And uh, the fact is that, um, yeah, it's got 24 volt input, just shows you different relays. You've got a thermal relay that takes 20 seconds to turn on. So we'll give it a sec. I mean, give it 20 seconds pretty much. Wait for it. It's coming. Oh, hey! I don't even know if that was 20 seconds. We'll find back. We'll find in um, the uh, edit at the end. But and then it turns on. So it only turns on for three seconds, and then it turns off. So this thermal relay is pretty cool. It's got a post office relay. This is inside. They're very similar to you know the Strouger switch ones. And then it's got a polarized relay. Pretty damn cool because you can have two different sides to the poles. Reed relay, can't even hear it or notice it, I can't even feel the reed relay. And then a big old chunky starter contractor, starter contactor is a big old chunky solenoid from a car. Oh, oh, it's scary. Oh, the problem with this thing is like, uh, it's not, it's all right, it's a bit fragile, but the thing is, is all of these switches are on the inside of it. And let's say a kid puts their finger in there and then turns it off, like that's the end of the finger off, basically. You don't want that. It's a bit, that's a bit lethal. And the other thing is, is, um, you know, this just left on. I mean, uh, that doesn't happen even in normal situations. Like in a car, this is only pushed in for the, for a small duration. So it's not made for extended amounts of push down. So, uh, you know, it uses quite a bit of current, a bit silly. So yeah, it's just um, not really wired up for just leaving, wire plugging in and just leaving alone. So the plan would be, would be uh, hopefully, I have it the closed and there's a there's a there's gonna be a box on the bottom with the buttons on it for the designated thing. So it'll probably be I'll probably whack out a whoop. Get one of my favourite, they're always the go-to. They're a bit pricey, but they are pretty damn good and neat looking and it sort of makes a matching uh thing around the whole museum and that'll be so there'll be five buttons and then maybe a switch for this one to change the contact so basically just taking over the uh, actual switches here with just yeah arcade buttons on this having this connected underneath it and um hopefully it will be this way around hopefully that that should be suffice uh powering not sure yet because i need to find somewhere that for this because a lot of the displays like this are actually battery powered because they don't really use much battery and i reckon a whole season of museum would be w one battery charge on something but this thing it might i don't know whether i'll get enough kaflunk out of a battery setup yeah that uses two amps so uh yeah that's quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of chunk of power so i don't know whether um yeah, I might just uh, have this power to the mains, but then I'll need to find somewhere where I'm able to either easily get a bit of conduit going along or just, you know, something. So there's just uh, things to think about. So what I need to do first is I haven't even had a look on the inside of this uh, thing yet. So um, let's have a look. Uh, by the way, there's loads of these kind of things planned that I have planned for displays. Uh, obviously, the first thing is uh, focusing on, you know, just doing it step by step. So obviously this, this kind of a, uh, kind of stuff in the museum the interactive stuff takes time because there's a lot more there's a lot more to think about than just uh plonking something in in the display case or something it's um yeah and writing something about it it's like thinking about it being safe thinking about it being easy to use thinking about it being used in a long longevity kind of thing like you know worrying about it being left on like some of the simps you know some of the simps are on uh, timers just about making sure that it's 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 idiot proof basically <laughs> A little bit idiot proof anyway and then yeah so the power will currently goes into here but i'll have that i'll have it out of the way i'll probably use a laptop charger maybe and have it uh, plugged into the hammond enclosure at the bottom uh directly so um then it's just a case of hopefully this not being a rat's nest underneath here and it's pretty easy and simple to figure out <laughs> what's going on but uh oh so many so many screws it's cool like um everything on here it's like I don't know where it's from. Uh, I got it for pretty pretty cheap. Like I think um, all in all, I got I basically I bought a lot of uh, about six boxes, some empty, some full like this with things like this for like 40, 40 pounds. So this was one of the six things in the forty pound lot, and like, that's all right. That's not that bad. That's not bad at all for something that's pretty much ready to go. Uh, obviously, when I bought it, I did. The purpose 
from purchasing it. This is probably for just a display uh, cabinet. Like a lot of things that I get hold of, they're never really intended to be used again, but I have this uh, urge to want to make things uh, still still function and stuff, which I think is really important. And ah, oh, God damn it. Oh no, they're all really short wires. Oh no. Oh, the whole box, <laughs> okay. Okay, okay, it's starting to make sense. There's a screw up here that's uh, just got to undo the star contactor. Got to make it a better, better, better connection there. Aha! Aha! Well, I didn't even need to undo it. I just, yeah, okay, okay. That makes a lot more sense now. So. Yeah, it's gonna be super simple, super duper simple. All I need to do is wire the power into here, then that'll sort out all of the switches, and then just wire a couple of switches so these still function if you want to. Look at that. look at this uh, parallel uh, little chunk of loads of little uh, wire wound uh, resistors there just to put, go together. So I'm gonna screw this back together, like screw the bits on the top, and then, uh, yeah, all I need to do is just wire, wire wires to the switches. Be really careful. In fact, I don't even need these to be connected anymore. I might just snip these in a sec. But the first thing that I'm gonna do is put the screws back in on these things. So I've gone ahead and done some drilling in place. So I've got this switch that annoyingly has a central off position. I couldn't really find another big switch around that was just like on on for the polarized uh, central relay. So there's a uh, free, I'll put some Dymo on it. Uh, it's got a couple of mounting holes to mount to the wall. Oh no, I'd need to put some holes to mount to the wall as well, but then a couple of big holes to route it through. And then on this side, there's a hole to connect up conduit. Conduit, so whenever I find where to put it and there'll be a power system, a power supply coming through there. Annoyingly, annoyingly, I don't really have any old school like uh, switches around push buttons So I've got to use these arcade buttons, which are still just what I've got sitting around you most of the time I work on what I have so uh, this is what I have so this is what's going in uh, like a, I, I bought like a load of these uh, a while back uh, So yeah, I'm just working off what I've got basically. It'll be nice to have some sort of more uh, You know themed kind of push buttons, but alas, I haven't got any sitting about If you turn these labels around, you can put whatever you want on them. So I like, quite like them the other way around. I don't really like them when they got the on off thing. You, you see these uh, switches on far too many projects. So I like uh, swapping it around to make it look a bit, you know, less easily recognizable as that switch. <laughs> so now I have this bolted on there. I need to make the connections between this. Uh, I've got some holes uh, just here and here. You can't see them, but they're going through. There's little 15 millimeter holes that uh, I'm gonna be able to poke the holes through. I'm gonna connect the battery the power so the lights light up. Uh, and then I'm just gonna wire in these. Probably, most likely disconnect this switch that actually selects between these two or it won't work at all with this one. And then, yeah, just need to connect connect it all together and it should should be good, ooh. Hey, so yeah, it's actually it's actually working. Uh, really, really pleased with it. It's doing its thing. Oh so, yeah, now I can close it up. Oh god, now I can close it. Move it over there. Oh, that's got a right old clunk to it, hasn't it? So yeah, it's it's doing it's working. It's working how it should, like the 20 second relay. The thing is, there's something that I didn't really think about, and it might be obvious to some people. It just uh, went over my head initially, and that was the current rating on the switches, and especially the solenoid. The rest of them are fine, but the solenoid uh, does exceed the current rating on the switch. What I'm gonna do. I know, but whatever, is I'm actually just gonna leave it as it is. And when it breaks, if it breaks, then I might actually end up just using another relay to actually use uh, this switch to uh, switch the actual solenoid. So there's a, so using this to switch a lower, lower amperage relay inside here, which will actually be able to amp up and have more, um, you know, have the right settings for this so it doesn't break. But you never know, in the past, 
I've been, you know, you get surprised by the current ratings. There's always a little bit of play in that stuff, so it might be fine. Who knows, it might last for years, so we'll find out. These do have the option of illuminating, but I decided not to have them illuminated because the actual uh, lights inside are just, they're good enough, they're nice. They've got the nice incandescent light bulbs. However, annoyingly, after looking about, I haven't got the right power supply for this yet to get it all wired up and stuff, but I'm gonna put it on the wall. And uh, yeah, after that, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll keep you updated on it being plugged in uh, with the conduit going off, but uh, that'll be a problem for another day. At least I'll have it mounted on the wall now. Worry about the power later, woo! I've also gone ahead and added a light strip at the top, which won't be that visible actually, because this is actually going to be quite low. Uh, you'll see it when it's wired up, you'll see when it's wired up, but you can see it right now. I may put a, uh, like a, a dimmer on top of them just to kind of diffuse it a bit, but it's made it a lot nicer because, yeah, it's visible. It's cool. Uh, so I ended up making the LED strips a lot dimmer, uh, so they're just uh, not as bright as, and as overpowering for the actual... There's a little bit of LED dim on the uh, solenoid, but that's just to be expected. It adds to the whole flavour. <laughs> Maybe I'll get a cable tidy for that. Wow, that's, that's annoying, that cable. There we go, that's better. Cool. So, I'll put it on the wall. You'll notice it is pretty low, but that's fine. I mean, as long as you're not 10 foot tall and got a really bad back, it's still, it's still perfectly interactive. The light will be shining below. It's not powered yet. Uh, there's going to be a power conduit coming from over here to uh, a, a source around the corner. Uh, the thing is, is this is actually going to, since it's coming from here, this might end up being the source of power for other things that are around here maybe going on. Because I'm going to, you know, like every single wall uh, over time, hopefully, it's about squeezing as much interactivity in the space as possible. It's not like a mainstream museum where there's like acres of space to have big laid out things sitting around everywhere. It's about trying to squeeze as much as you can into the space. It's not a really minuscule area, but it's still, you know, it's not massive. So it's just getting everything, being smart about the spacing. So there's gonna be plenty more as time goes on on this wall and many other walls around. <laughs> but I'll do an update when this is plugged in. This one works above it. This uh, buzzer works as well. There's a couple of other phones that we put around, like these two. But hopefully, by the time I'll have a few more ringing bell kind of things, and there'll be like a keyboard so you can play it like a musical beat instrument or something like that. I don't know, but anyway, that's just another tick off the museum to-do list. If you like this kind of stuff, have a think about supporting this kind of thing because, you know, I'm trying to fill it up. It'll be open pretty damn soon. July is the time, so yeah. yeah. Anyway, and all that stuff, subscribe and yeah, have a lovely time, have a lovely time. <laughs>